Hi guys, it's your island girl, and I'm back with another reaction video for you today. And today I am reacting to a brief history of the royal family. Have I ever looked into anything with the royal family? I don't think so. Well, this one should be very interesting. I'm getting this one from CGP Gray. Please go over and show him some love. The link will be in the description below, guys, so you can click the link from there and let him know Island Girl sent you. All right, guys? Um, Without further ado, we're going to get into it. But before I do, welcome. Thank you for being here. And to all my regular schmeglers, day one, sweetie pie, sweetie pools, come on in, wrap back. Put a smile on your face and enjoy this reaction with your island girl. All right? So, let's get into this video. Here we go, right about now. 1066, the start of the royal family on these fair isles. Well, there were kings in many countries before that, and druids before that, and Pangaea before that, but we have to start somewhere, and a millennia ago is plenty far. If that leaves out Ethelred the Unready, so it goes. William the Conqueror conquered in the Norman Conquest, Norman here being code for French. Because it's the olden days, people had lots of kids, but to keep things simple, this family tree is going to leave out many of them on each branch, because not every child matters. So William had three kids we care about William II, Henry I, and Adela. If you've seen the video about royal succession, click here if you haven't, you'll know that formal rules for passing on the crown will get established, but for now it's a free-for-all home team advantage to the eldest son, but never forget bigger army diplomacy. Upon William the Conqueror's death, William II became king. William II didn't marry and on a bros day out with Henry died in a hunting accident that gave Henry I the crown. Henry I had at least 26 children, of which only two were 100% legit. He declared his daughter would rule next after his son died in a shipwreck and swore his knights to honor Empress Matilda by crossing their hearts, hoping to die, sticking a needle in their eye. Hold on, did he say he had 26 kids, but only two was legitimately his? Maybe my... <laughs> I'm not laughing. How should I explain it? Don't get me wrong. Is this factual? Because he said only two was legitimately his so or is it only two that he claimed now look how the other brother died from a hunting accident that sound fishy let's continue but when henry one died while matilda was in france many ignored this while her cousin stephen raced to westminster using faster army diplomacy to get coronated first empress oh. matilda did eventually return and start a decades-long civil war that was pretty much a stalemate because turtling in the 1100s was an effective rts tactic while she did rule part of the island as matilda never had an official coronation her monarchical status is disputed now as stephen's children were either dead disinterested or a nun his crown went to his nephew henry ii who had four sons henry the young richard the lionheart king john and and Jeff. Guess who died before his turn? Henry II saw the history thus far of conquering, assassination, maybe, usurpation, attritional war, and decided waiting until after the death of the current king before sorting out the next king didn't work. So Henry II changed the system and crowned Henry the Young co-king with him, invoking the rule of two. One is none. Two is one. If it's important, you need a backup. It was a good plan for stability, helped by the young king's popularity, but unfortunately the apprentice rebelled against the master, rallying his brothers, which resulted in another civil war of disputed monarchs, during which Henry the Young died of dysentery, Henry the Elder died of fever, and Richard I took the crown. After Richard came John and four eldest son successions in a row. John to Henry III, insert Magna Carta here, to Edward I, Longshanks to Edward II, to Edward III. Actually, Ed II was overthrown by Isabel of France, aka the She-Wolf of France, aka his wife. After deposing her husband, she acted as regent for their son. Every one of these arrows glosses over a bit of complexity. Edward III had five sons, Edward the Black Prince, Lionel, John, Edmund, and Thomas, none of which would wear the crown. When Edward III died, his throne would have gone to the Black Prince, but he was dead at the time, so the crown went to his boringly named son Richard, now the second. There's a bunch of drama llama stuff around Richard II, which your English teacher might force you to read about, but spoiler alert, history's ending is always the same. Bigger army diplomacy. This time from Henry IV, who gets the crown, and Richard II gets starvation and captivity. Another Henry before we get to the War of the Roses, a war that strikes terror and boredom in the minds of students of history the nation over who have to deal with this family tree simplified to explain why everyone was angry. But the shortest version ever is Edward III's great-great-grandsons duked it out even though one of them was dead for part of the fight, but we can't get into that now, so Henry VI to Edward IV to Henry VI to Edward IV the end. Edward IV on his deathbed left his crown to his son, but being 12 he needed protection, so Richard, his bestest uncle in the world, promised to take super good care of him. Edward V then promptly disappeared under 
suspicious circumstances that left Richard to become Richard III. But he didn't stay king for long because Edward III's great-great-great-great-grandson Henry VII took the crown, put a ring on Elizabeth of York to lock down that royal legitimacy, and then sired Henry VIII. Split her Jesus! <laughs> no, sir! Hold on, people. Give me a moment. Give my brain. My brain's frying right here. So it, it, this is something that I can never, ever see to wrap my mouth. My mouth. My mind around. The need for power. Okay, your brother, your father die, it go to the eldest. The eldest now work out, the younger try to take it. If the younger don't try to take it, the uncle try to take it. If the uncle don't try to take it, then another brother try to take it. And your brothers, I, I, I don't get it. Now, when he said Richard was supposed to protect the Henry, but he was too young, and he, then he went missing. We all know the end result of that. He went missing because... Henry wanted to, to, Richard wanted to rule. Then this, when, when he said that, okay, the other guy had five kids and only the little idiot one down at the bottom, get it, or the nobody one. I'm like, Jesus, the, su the succession between them is just ridiculous. It seemed like none of them live a long period of time. None of them. It's crazy. ...of churches and ladies. Henry VIII thought it was high time to formalize the rules of inheritance, so he wrote them out in his will, basically saying oldest boys first, girls only if there aren't any boys, and Parliament approved the rules, which oh. should have made everything neat and tidy, but we're about to enter the really messy time, because Henry's son lived just long enough to screw it up. Inheriting the throne at nine, there was, of course, a scheming protectorate running things, yet he still declared at 15 that his father's rules were dumb and his sister's were dumb and that his first cousin once removed, Lady Jane Grey, should be the next monarch instead. Then he died and Lady Jane Grey became queen at Sweet Sixteen sort of, in a disputed status way, for nine days, until beheaded by Mary, the first really, truly, officially, nobody doubts a queen. Mary didn't have any kids and passed the crown to Elizabeth I, who became the second queen in a row to also not have children. But no problem, because Lady Jane Grey was next in, oh right. Now this is the point at which we acknowledge Scotland exists. They'd been doing their own royal thing, which for our purposes joins the English branch where Edward III's great-granddaughter married into it in the 1400s, and then goes James, 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 Mary Queen of Scots, James, bringing us back to the 1600s. Henry VIII's sister importantly also married into this line of the family, giving it English legitimacy points in the eyes of the English Parliament, which asked to borrow Scotland's James, making him king of two countries, with two numbers in his name, depending on where you're counting from. James had a son, Charles I, and you might think this unification of the monarchs means the very messy time is over. But no because Cromwell. Cromwell didn't like kings and beheaded Charles I, declaring no royals no longer, making himself the Lord Protector, which was in no way like a king, even though he was in charge and it was a hereditary office passed to his son. But the Cromwells didn't last, mainly because his son was a fancy country squire who didn't follow rule zero, keep the army happy, giving Charles's son, Charles II, the ability to re-establish the monarchy. Charles II had lots of children, all of which were illegitimate, leaving his brother, James II, next in line but wow so Cromwell said listen I don't like the king thing so he did it beheaded who he needed to behead it and then become Lord when you think about it aren't you in in a position to rule over something wouldn't you consider the fact that you in a sense are a king this is madness guys it's, it's so much chaos and hatred between family line no, you can see where it comes from because this is, it's, it is crazy. So they didn't even last long because from 1653, Cromwell, no, 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 Charles the second, Charles James the second. So between 1660, 1653, and 1685, it's between all of these. Well, no, let's start from 1625, which was James. Okay, the confusion, utter confusion between these is ridiculous. Aye. 
But James too was Catholic, and ever since Henry split the church, Catholics had terrible approval ratings. But conveniently, he had nice Protestant daughters, one married to a Dutch prince, who by the nature of these things was the grandson of Charles I. Bonus English legitimacy points, plus who doesn't like the Dutch? With James so unpopular and William and Mary so popular, the army and nobles pretty much invited the royal couple to invade, and James too fled. William and Mary ruled as co-monarchs, but without children, the crown went to Queen Anne, who also didn't produce any heirs, though not from lack of effort. She was pregnant 17 times. Again, what? finding themselves with a no royals, no longer situation, Parliament decided it was really, truly, seriously the time to sort out the rules of inheritance, to avoid pretenders from every branch of this messy tree fighting over the crown. Parliament did a royal reboot to clear the cruft, defining Sophia of Hanover, the granddaughter of James Dual Numbers, to be the new starting point for all claims to the crown. These rules finally stuck, thus ending the very messy time. George I, son of Sophia, was the first king under the new rules, then his son George II to George III, and even though he lost America and his mind, never fear, the rules are here, so the crown continued to calmly descend the family tree, going to George IV, who didn't have any surviving children, to William IV, who had ten children, all illegitimate. Then passing through his dead younger brother to Queen Victoria, who started her reign in 1837 and made it to just over the finishing line of the 20th century, which is a doubly impressively long time given the state of medical technology then. After the end of her age, the crown went to her son, Edward VII, to George V, to Edward VIII, who finally breaks up this neat and tidy and somewhat boring line of succession by committing a scandal, marrying a commoner, an American commoner, an American commoner divorcee twice over. Oh! Actually, the divorces were a real problem and weren't compatible with the monarch's role as head of state and also the Church of England in the 1930s. Edward abdicated to his brother George VI, who was reluctant to take the crown and then had to oversee World War II and the subsequent breakup of the British Empire, which drained the reluctant king's health who died at 56, leaving the crown to Elizabeth II in 1952 at the age of 25. Seven years older than Victoria, her great-great-grandmother mother was on her coronation day, but in early September 2015, Elizabeth became the longest reigning queen in not just British history, but world history. From Elizabeth wow. II, the crown continues on to Charles, the longest heir apparent in British history, to his son William, to his son George. And that is a brief history of the royal family. What a breakdown. What a breakdown. So that is just amazing just the, just the way he explained it it's literally amazing because i'm like jesus where are we going with this because this is a lot to unpack but i look how crazy it is look how long queen elizabeth reigned for and loved i, I know it's in our time but i'm like it, it was so messy in the beginning so messy so much war so much chaos for a crown and then things tapered off and then it makes more sense you understand she's loved she's adored L look how look how long it took for that to happen wow and then the longest waiting is charles in waiting and if his mother didn't die at the point where she did, he would still be waiting. And then it's going to be his son after that. And then his son's son. Woo, child. Woo. Longest queen, longest woman, and the longest reign. Oh, wow. Now that's something to, to think about. So Henry, when you think about it, when you think about it, Henry was in a sense the last point of chaos underneath Henry. And after that, after her great, I think it's her great grandmother death, that's when things take her off. Let me know if I'm wrong in the comment section, guys. But I'm like, whoo, that's a lot to take in. Very interesting video. Like I said, getting this one from C. C G P Gray. Um hmm. it's a 
the island girl. I'm on a running high. I lost my train of thought right there, guys. I, I wanted to say something else and just slipped me. There was something else I was going to say. Mm. Let me know in the comment section what you'd like me to check out next because it will be done. It's your island girl and I'm running out of here. Love you guys to the max. Come on in. Wrap back. Be good. Be kind. Be safe. Love each other. And I will see you guys in another video. Bye.